What is up YouTube? Zara is here with a brand new video and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a breakdown of what happened in the HES Pro League qualification lane of 2016. Now with four Pro League spots up for grabs in this event, this is a very important event for every single professional team that was competing in this one. Now to organize this video I'm going to be breaking down every single team that qualified for the Pro League and explaining all the series that they had. Now let's start things off with Enigma 6. In the winner's bracket, for, in the first match in the winner's bracket they were able to beat Denial Esports 3-0 which is very shocking to me considering on how disorganized Enigma 6 was in the uh, in their first event being PAX East. So I did not expect them to come out on fire being able to 3-0 Denial. They would move on to the finals of the winner's bracket having to face Optic. They were able to beat them relatively easy with a solid 4-0 win against them, which once again was very, very surprising to me considering how good Optic has been doing online considering how bad Enigma 6 has been doing in general, which was a huge shocker to me. Now let's talk about Renegades, which was also another team that qualified. In their first match, which was the winner's bracket first round, they would have to face Optic Gaming. Um, I was expecting that Optic Gaming would be able to beat them relatively easily, considering how Optic has been able to beat them pretty easily in online in the past. Um, but Renegades uh, did put up a great fight against Optic Gaming. Uh, they gave it really all their effort. Um, but Optic Gaming was able to come out on top, which was something I was expecting. I wasn't expecting that Renegades would put up that much of a fight, but I mean, I don't know what happened there. So they'd moved down to the loser's bracket, the first round of the loser's bracket. They'd, they were forced to face Denial Esports which was another team that I would think would be able to beat, uh, beat Renegades considering the great level of experience that was on the Nile Esports. Um, but Renegades was able to come out on top. They beat them 3-1. Um, there was a couple of close games there, but they were able to come out with a relatively easy victory. And it was a very entertaining series, but they were able to come out on top and they would have to move on to the finals or the losers bracket finals. Um, they would face Optic Gaming once again in the losers bracket finals. Only this time, they'd be able to absolutely dominate Optic Gaming, being able to beat them 4-0. Um, most of the games weren't really that close, to be completely honest. I felt like Optic Gaming really ran out of steam when they had to play Enigma 6. Um, they tried their hardest when they had to play Enigma 6, but Enigma 6 in this event was just an overall better team in my eyes. Um, so they really ran out of steam in that series, so having to face Renegades. Um, maybe they came in a little bit too confident when they played this Renegades team, thinking that since they've beat them so many times in the past, they'd just be able to take this victory and move on. Um, but Renegades really put up a great fight against Optic Gaming. They were playing with, they were playing their hearts out, and Optic Gaming just really wasn't ready for what Renegades had to offer. They, in my eyes, uh, from what I, how I saw this Optic Gaming team play, they just were not prepared for what Renegades was doing to them which was a huge shocker to me considering how many times Optic Gaming has been able to beat Renegades. I figured they'd have some sort of way to be, to be able to beat them all the time, um, but they really looked like they didn't have any strategies or any answers for what Renegades was doing to them. Now, another team that qualified was Allegiance, and I said from the start that Allegiance was a team that I was very confident in. If you guys don't remember the teams that I did predict uh, to qualify this season, or to qualify in this event, um, I predicted for the Group A, I predicted uh, Denial Esports and I predicted Optic Gaming and then for Group B, Group B, I predicted Allegiance and I also predicted Team Liquid. Um, so Allegiance was definitely one of the teams that I was extremely confident about. I was more confident than a lot of other teams that I predicted uh, to do well in this event and the main reason was just because of the great combination of slaying power and objective work th that this team has. They play very very smart and they showed it. Um, in their uh, first round, which was the first round of the winner's bracket, uh, the winner's bracket, they were able to dominate Soul Red, beat them 3-0, and in my eyes, I really just saw Allegiance just outplay them in almost every single situation, and Soul Red is a very, very smart team, and that's one thing that really uh, surprised me. I wasn't expecting Soul Red to play as smart as they were playing. Um, I don't know if it was because they had so they had a good coach, which was Captain Anarchy, who was you know probably giving them a lot of great advice. Um, but Soul Red really played very well in this event. Um, I wasn't expecting them to qualify, but I definitely wasn't expecting them to put up as much of a fight as they did against a lot of these teams. So that was great work on Soul Red, but Allegiance was able to move on to the winner's bracket finals and they had to face Envy, uh, who was able to beat Team Liquid in the, in the first round of the winner's bracket. Allegiance was able to beat them relatively easily. Um, I felt like a lot of situations they were just able to outplay them the same way they did with Soul Red. Um, they made it very clear that Alle Allegiance was a very, very be was a much better team than Envy, and um, you could see that with their objective work, with slaying power, um, Allegiance just looks like a much more formid formidable team than Envy in my eyes. Um, so they were able to earn the spot in the Pro League, and congratulations to those guys. Now the final team that qualifies Envy, um, and I was really concerned about Envy. Envy was a team that I knew had the capabilities to qualify and do well in this event. 
um, but I just was not confident because of their performance online. Um, in competitive Halo, there typically tends to be two teams. There tends to be teams that are really just good, whether it's online or in land, and usually those are the easier teams to predict to do well. Those are like the CLGs, you know, Allegiance when, uh, or Allegiance from last season, you know, just teams that are able to just do really well both online and in lands. Um, and then you have some teams that tend to do much better on lands than they do online. Um, and sometimes you see players like that too, uh, which would wind up making up a team that's like that. But, you know, I feel like Envy is one of those teams that are just better on land than online. And that's something that we just have to get used to about this team. Um, because they played completely different than they did on land. I don't know if this is a strategy that they were trying to do uh, to attempt to get all these teams on for bear for them. But um, Envy played so much better in this event than they did in the past couple of online scrims. And that was really saying a lot considering that they were able to beat uh, Team Liquid relatively easy. Uh, being able to beat them in the winner's bracket first round 3-1 to one, and then having to face them in the loser's bracket finals 4-0. Uh, and they were able to beat them 4-0 which just really sent a strong message to Team Liquid saying that we are a better team than you in land which is obviously significantly more important uh, to be good in the land than to be good in, in an online qualifier. Um, so that was definitely, that definitely made a strong statement to Team Liquid to me. Um, they may have threatened them and made them pretty scared because the way Envy was really playing against Team Liquid was just like, gr like godlike. Like they were outsmarting them in so many situations, and it was just really surprising to me. Like I said, I was not predicting that Envy would be able to do this good in the event, but it just shows that there are teams like this. Now, those are the four teams that qualified for the HCS Pro League. There are still two spots left for the Pro League. Which should be up for grabs in the last chance qualifier, which would be, which is probably going to be a, a super exciting action-packed qualifier, considering that you're going to have a combination of, you know, the other top pro teams as well as a lot of the top amateurs competing. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see that qualifier. Um, like I said before, this event was full of a lot of surprises. I wasn't expecting a lot of these teams to not qualify, considering how good that they've been doing online. But um. Hopefully, you know, a lot of these teams, especially off the game, and you're able to bounce back um, and get their, you know, brains out of this, you know, little mess up that they had in this event. They definitely were not playing like they usually do online. So hopefully they're able to do well in the last chance qualifier and qualify for the Pro League because it would suck to see them not qualify and just wind up, you know, losing, having another losing season like they had last season. Considering that I strongly believe that Optic Gaming is capable of doing very well in this, uh, in this season. So hopefully we'll, we'll just see what happens. I hope for the best for every single team that didn't qualify. Congratulations to all the, team that, all the teams that did qualify. They did put up a great fight and they showed us what they're capable of doing, which is very impressive work. Um, and if you like this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Hope you have a great day.